Is decision fatigue real? Is it real? In order to achieve long-term goals, we need to see through our plans. One theory which is proposed to hinder this is making too many decisions in a short period of time. This is something which is known as decision fatigue and it is proposed to make us give in to those short-term desires and not stick to our intentions. But is this theory real? When we make a decision, our brain has to weigh up the choices it is presented with to see what action is worth taking. Let's say you go to your favourite coffee shop and see the new seasonal drinks are on the menu. Now your brain has to make a choice. Do you stick with your trusty oat latte or twist for a festive frappuccino? Your brain has to weigh up the cost of this decision with the value you're going to get out of each result. This value assignment is thought to happen in frontal areas of the brain. This includes the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which has been shown to be important for integrating incoming information and signals from other brain regions to allow you to assess your current situation with past information to come to a well-rounded conclusion on what to do next. The anterior cingulate cortex, an area which is proposed to bring emotion into the decision-making process and detecting negative outcomes of choices made to inform future decisions, and the orbitofrontal cortex, the rationalizer which weighs up the reward you will get from the choices in front of you, meaning you can assign a value to each potential outcome. The value of these choices will come from judging measurements like cost, emotional context, and similar past experiences. Your brain is having to listen to emotional and memory signals, as well as process the information in front of its eyes to come to a conclusion. So from this, we can see decision-making is a fairly intense process for our brains, and we have to make these many times a day. Some are trivial, we might not even realise we are making a decision, whereas others can weigh on our mind for long stretches of time. But are these numbers limited? Decision fatigue is a concept which relies on our ability to decide coming from a finite source of willpower, and that is our ability to resist temptation and delay gratification to meet our long-term goals. Like a petrol tank which is refilled, each decision we make is proposed to eat away at some willpower fuel. By this logic, after making so many choices, the willpower tank will be left empty, meaning an inability to resist temptation. This hypothesis was proposed after experiments showing if you put people through mentally demanding tasks, they perform less well on preceding cognitive challenges. For example, when shoppers were faced with a bombardment of questions by researchers, they perform less well in following self-control tasks than those who are left to browse freely. This reduced ability to decide was proposed to occur due to a decrease in self-control as a result of answering lots of questions. Experiments like making people hold onto their emotions while watching a sad film, followed by having to perform a series of self-disciplined lab tasks, went on to justify this reasoning, as the stoic audience members gave up more easily when attempting to complete the complex puzzles. This work was propped up by noticing decision-making abilities could be restored by glucose administration, the brain's fuel, by giving participants sugary drinks following a depleting task and propositioning them with another, like making long-term beneficial financial decisions, they were able to answer such questions rationally, like they hadn't performed the first task at all. Whereas participants given a drink with artificial sweetener were more likely to go with a short-term winning solution, which was less beneficial in the long run. It was proposed the influx of glucose was able to redirect the brain's energy to areas involved in avoiding making impulsive decisions. However, these studies are not directly measuring the willpower source. In fact, it isn't clear what or where that is. They are suggesting willpower is depleted based on what they observe. A more recent work is suggesting the beliefs about our finite willpower are not quite what we thought. Firstly, in terms of our survival, having a limit on willpower doesn't really benefit us in any other way than reserving energy. If you make lots of decisions early in the day, deplete your willpower, but then come face to face with a decision which is crucial to your survival, it ain't looking good for you being able to navigate your way out of that situation. Instead of willpower being a finite source, it has been proposed willpower is more like an emotion, which heightens and lessens depending on circumstance. This flexible willpower makes more sense in terms of being able to switch full resist temptation mode on when necessary. The reason willpower is not switched on for all of our waking hours has also been explained by an evolutionary theory. For optimal survival, our ancestors will have had to balance between exploring and exploiting. If we were constantly resisting temptation in these circumstances, we could miss an opportunity to enhance our state of fitness, like seeing a new food source or seeking a mate. This gives some reasoning other than energy reserving for why willpower isn't on 24-7. A 
Aside from the reasons why willpower being finite and drained by too many decisions not making much sense, we know that self-control can be manipulated in day-to-day -day life. For example, when you get home after a long day at work and see that the bins are full, you might be resistant to taking them outside. But if someone said they would pay you £500 for doing so, you would probably rush to tie up the bursting bags. Willpower can be altered by enhanced reward, perception of effort required for a task, and even by beliefs that willpower is not limited. A study showed individuals who experienced decision fatigue in an experimental setup were the individuals who believed willpower could be depleted. The people who did not believe willpower was a finite source showed no signs of depletion in the task when subjected to a process thought to drain self-control. These flexibilities in being able to perform tasks based on different variables argue against the idea that we can use up our willpower from making too many decisions. So it doesn't look like we have a limit on willpower, meaning we can't just simply save it up by not making decisions. But why is it towards the end of the day, we feel less inclined to make the decisions we know will get us towards our goals? This is believed to come from the increased effort we perceive tasks to need after a tough day and the lack of immediate reward that the short-term actions necessary to achieve long-term goals provide. It has been proposed one of the reasons we don't make the best decisions for our future selves towards the end of the day is down to fatigue. This has been shown to be the case for sleep deprivation and physical fatigue, but it is now being investigated for cognitive fatigue, the type of tiredness experienced after performing mentally demanding tasks. This fatigue is proposed to shift performance priorities rather than deplete willpower. When cognitively fatigued, the perceived effort of an action, like taking the bins out, seems much higher than the reward, meaning we are less likely to carry out what we intended. By the way our brain is wired, we seek short-term reward, so if a task has no obvious payoff, it can be much harder to see through, especially when we're tired and the level of effort feels much higher. The research field exploring how cognitive fatigue may impact decision making is still pretty young and researchers are hoping to see if cognitive fatigue acts like muscle fatigue, a process which can be recovered with rest and strengthened with consistent work. So it looks like willpower is not finite. It's more likely that cognitive fatigue means that the decisions we make in that moment are not the best things for our long-term self. Therefore, one of the best ways to get to your goals is to set your plans in advance to save yourself from having to make decisions when you are tired. Following a schedule set by yourself with those long-term goals in mind, not questioning every decision you've made and avoiding giving in to that short-term pleasure will definitely bring you closer to your goals. For more neuroscience and understanding how your brain works to achieve your goals, subscribe to the channel and you can also catch me over on social media with any of your questions. I'll see you next time.